Good evening, everyone. I hope you're all well. I hope for um, those who celebrate Easter that you've had a great Easter break. Um, for those of you who are back to school, um, I hope that it's been a great start to, to your week. Um, but we're going to dive in today on a transactional writing, and we're going to look at a model answer from one of Up Level Academy's GCC English study students. And we're really proud of them, and they've been doing exceptionally well. So let's look at, we always want to reverse engineer, because that's our um, motto at Up Level Academy, because only by looking at the end goal can you be sure that you've achieved it. So we're going to see how your child can use what they read to inspire them, to understand what examiners are looking for and to see an example of a high end answer. So here's a mark scheme. So regardless of whether your child is studying IGCC, WJEC, EDUCAS, EDXL, AQA, OCR, CCEA, regardless of what they're studying, this is what you're being tested on. They're, they're being tested on their ability to produce clear and coherent writing. Um, that is um, for different purposes and audiences, their ability to describe, narrate, explain, instruct, to give information, to be able to alter the style for a given purpose and to use language imaginatively and creatively. And they're writing for impact. They want to select, organize, and emphasize facts, ideas, and key points, citing evidence and quotation where necessary, and using rhetorical devices and language devices for emotional impact. So I hope you can see that it's not just about using techniques, it's about using it meaningfully. Um, they wanna see that your child is able to craft a piece of writing that is able to really impact their audience, okay? So this is an exam task. Should people travel, write an article persuading a reader your point of view on the topic. So that was the task they were given. Now, of course, in the exam, um, you don't know what the topic is going to be on. Now, this summer, we've been given advanced information from exam boards. So you might know that you have to write an article or a letter or a speech, but you don't know what the topic is. And um, equally, for those who are sitting the exams next year, you might not even be told that. So it could be any of those. So how can you prepare? And it's something that many students ask. And one of the best ways is to read on topics from articles, biographies, autobiographies, but not just reading for the sake of it, being focused. So reading for a purpose, reading for a purpose. And actually we've um, created a library of that for our students who have immediate access. And we've also got a complimentary um, one. It's limited, there's only a few resources there, but still highly invaluable for people who are not yet working with us. So if you want access to Reading With Purpose, our library, then let us know in the comments and we can um, sort you out with one um, and um, sort you out with a, a login code for that. But as I said, for all of our, um, our students, they are, have access to it and it's really helpful. They love it because they often get told by their teachers you know, to improve, they need to read, but they don't know what to read or even how to read. And at GCC level in particular, you know, students don't have a lot of time and so they, they can't just you know read copious amounts they need to have it really focused and actually even kids who do love reading and make the time for it and do have the time for it and um, there's sometimes a disconnect we often see students who are avid readers but they're not doing well in their writing and reading alone is not enough it's about using what you're being able to read effectively in your own writing and so this is why for this task it's important to read as i said you know, a range of um, texts, but reading for purpose. So it might be reading to get ideas. It might be reading to get vocabulary, to get jargon, okay? So it's really important that you're focused. And so this is what the student did. And um, they read this article before they answered this question. And it was about virtual traveling during coronavirus. So we're gonna have a quick look at it. We're not gonna read the whole thing, but it says, can we travel without traveling? Virtual worlds, can we travel without traveling? Um, so again, very relevant to today's society. So with most of the world homebound, it's time to reflect on what it actually means to travel and whether it's possible to travel without, well, traveling. Against the backdrop of whistling wind and heavy breathing, a man with a Germanic accent is yelling at me, take your time. I tried to focus on the ascender clips on the two wires leading sleepily upwards. 
but there's a constant temptation to look left to a sharp drop into a vast snowy abyss. But I reach out, clip it in and start to climb. I'm at the foot of the Hillary Step, the infamous 12 meter rock base near the summit of Everest, long considered the most challenging section of an ascent from the Nepal side, with oxygen dangerously thin at approximately 8,790 meters high, many climbers have fallen here or simply sat down and never stood up again. When Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay became the first known individuals to reach the summit of Everest in 1953, Hillary wrote of Norgay reaching the top of the Hillary step, he collapsed, exhausted, like a giant fish when it has just been hauled from the sea after a terrific struggle. When I reach the top of the wires and unclip, I feel faintly queasy, but not perhaps in the way the great Sherpa did. I pause, Everest VR, and take off my HTC, the virtual reality headset. As my eyes recalibrate, I find myself on my second floor flat in Hackney, East London, on coronavirus-induced lockdown. My view is no longer a bird's eye, one of the high Himalayas. Instead, beyond my Juliet balcony, a handful of builders are working on a new residential block, the sun glinting on their high-vis vests. I find myself envying them while also pondering if they really qualify as essential workers. Well, there are many people much worse off than I am. This is an awkward time to be a freelance travel writer. I've had trips to Kazakhstan's um, Sharon Canyon and Utah's Canyon Point postponed indefinitely and most of my commissions canceled. There was a brief window where hiring a motorhome and driving to the Scottish Western Isle of Eek um, seemed like a good idea. Now, like many across the world, I'm mostly homebound. It's become a time to reflect on what it actually means to travel, something I've done on an almost monthly basis for years, and whether it's possible to travel without, well, traveling. In one sense, the answer is yes. Everest VR, an hour-long recreation of an Everest climb from incense ceremonies and kit run-throughs at base camp to crossing deep crevices is just one of the experiences available with VR headsets from brands such as Aviv and Oculus. So you can see here then how they started it. And it's really insightful. I mean, it seems exciting at the start. I mean, and this is important as well. When your child is reading, always ask them, you know, how does that make you feel? What is the impact of this? What are you thinking? What techniques have they used to bring this to life? Um, you know, this one starts abruptly in the middle of action. Why is this person authority? Well, because they're a travel writer. So it poses a very interesting, you know, question. So now we're going to look at back at um, the student's answer and see how they've used what they've read to influence their writing. So this is an example of their introduction. So we are going to look at their introduction. We are going to look at an example of their main body paragraphs. We're going to look at the whole thing, otherwise we'll be here for some time. And then we're going to look at their conclusion. So you get a, a sense of what they've written. So sitting in my living room with the cold and gold for me and the day is getting darker, it makes it seem as though it's time for a midnight snack, even though I just had my lunch. I therefore try to ignore my greedy growling stomach. Instead of focusing on what's inside the kitchen, I focus on the hot dessert and the magnificent pyramids towering, oh, sorry, and instead of focusing on, it's because um, when I, I read this with a student, they, they had said um, dessert instead of desert. And they said it because they talked about midnight snacks. And so that's why. So apologies. But let me start that again. Sitting in my living room with the cold engulfing me and the day is getting darker. It makes it seem as though it's time for a midnight snack, even though I just had my lunch. I therefore try to ignore my greedy growling stomach. Instead of focusing on what's inside the kitchen, I focus on the hot desert and the magnificent pyramids towering over me. Each heavy stone is stacked up in a way that still causes debates, since people still don't quite understand how they manage to place the stones meticulously by constructing a sturdy Lego tower one on top of the other. Slowly, I crawl into the small hole leading to the tomb, going down, further, further, and then climbing for what seems like forever to then finally reach the long-awaited tomb. Adorned in golden patents of the afterlife, the tomb is definitely fit for a king, Delicate ornaments and figures of servants to help serve the pharaoh in his afterlife are strewn across the tomb walls. In the center, the awe-inspiring coffin, which is painted vibrant blues and reds, as well as covered in gold, is like the centerpiece at a wedding or fancy event. Once I start to feel my claustrophobic kick in, I pause the game and take my VR headset off. Back in the comforts of my own home, I gaze out of my conservatory window into my small, now thanks to the VR world, underwhelming cold garden. Seeing the difference or lack, out, lack of between reality and virtual reality always makes me wonder, what is the use of traveling if it can be done without, well, traveling? But if you choose to look at it one way, then yes, it's possible. There are thousands of possibilities that have been designed and developed through VR headsets, 
that allows us to experience many different adventures and landscapes while we can still get a nice cuppa from the kitchen, meaning that you can enjoy other cultures without foregoing any of your own comforts. Many compasses such as View and Oculus provide a variety of experiences so that you can travel the world from your home. It seems like picks us up, but the old man travels in his house is finally becoming a reality. So you can see they've adapted this to really make it their own. Um, you can see that this is a strong piece because it fits its purpose. They also have a great sense of who their audience is. They make references to Lego. Um, they also make references, uh, allusions. They use allusions, which is a high-end technique to Pixar. They also use a variety of punctuation. We have ellipsis, we have parenthesis. Um, ellipsis is the three dots. Parenthesis is the brackets there to give information. They also use colloquialism, slang language, nice kappa, and they show an understanding of what people want when they travel and perhaps some of the things that they miss. So it highlights that they've really thought about who they're talking to, so it makes it personal and engaging for their reader. So let's look at an example of their middle paragraph. Imagine this, you could dive into the deep blue with whales and swim alongside jellyfish without the fear of being stung. Or if you don't fancy that, you could climb Mount Everest right to its summit and officially say, I've climbed Mount Everest. And the best bit, this experience would no longer be for just a select few. This would be open to everyone since it wouldn't matter about your age or financial situation. It wouldn't matter if you were in a wheelchair. So traveling would be truly open, accessible and inclusive. Not only that, but you would not have to sacrifice the mental and emotional health benefits of being out in nature. As outlined in Professor Lee Bacon's from the University of Nottingham recent report after years of studies that even viewing nature digitally has been scientifically proven to help people's mental well-being. From our studies, people exposed to simulations of nature reap the same benefits as participants who went out into nature. Consequently, if you're able to travel to distant lands, get the mental health benefits while avoiding risk, financial ruin and potential limitations due to your age and mobility, why wouldn't you do it? So this is a fantastic paragraph. It's packed with a variety of techniques to serve their purpose, which is to argue that perhaps traveling isn't necessary because of VR. They've used an imperative, imagine this. They've also thought about what well, actually, what are some of the reasons that traveling isn't accessible? And they've used rule of three to highlight and emphasize the point that actually we, by using VR instead of physically going out there, makes it um, truly inclusive. It even draws upon an expert from a well-known prestigious university to show that they've researched the task, to show that they are aware of um, you know, ethos, which is making sure that you highlight your credentials by um, drawing on experts. They've also used a rhetorical question to encourage the reader to contemplate what's been said. And again, They've used rule of three again, avoiding risk, financial ruin, and potential limitations. Again, acknowledging that actually traveling, what are some of the reasons that people are against it? Well, these are the reasons, and you can avoid all this. So can you see how they are crafting a strong piece, focusing on the task at hand? And you can see from looking at the marks, it's in alignment with that. So this will score really well. Now, obviously, in real life, in your professional life, in your A-levels, university um, and anything else, you wanna make sure that you're researching and that your you know, statistics, your quotes are accurate. But in an English exam, because you don't have access to books or to the internet, you're unable to research. So it's great if your child can remember facts and they can draw upon a variety of resources, but if they can't, they can make it up, but it just has to be believable. Does that make sense? And the reason being is because the examiners are looking to see whether your child can use those techniques effectively. So that's why. And then, oh, and then let's have a look at our end paragraph. So I've accidentally put the takeaways um, just before then. So let me readjust that and let's look at the end. So let's look at the conclusion. So there were two other paragraphs in the middle as well. But as I said, we don't want to be here um, or evening, so we're going to go to the end so you get a sense of it. So contemplating all of the outstanding opportunities that VR has to offer, short circuits my brain, so I decide to go for a walk and get some fresh air. Sitting, now in my back garden, 
I seem to only just experience all of my familiar surroundings as if for the first time. Perhaps it's because I've had a VR headset on for the best part of the day. The headrows stand out the most. I am unsure why, but they seem to be a boundary that helps to create a sense of a secret garden. And my mind is catapulted to that amazing novel. My train of thought is disrupted by the light rustle of the leaves in the wind and the random coo of a bird flying by, or is it nesting? My ears strain to listen. For once, I actually sit and stay long enough to outside to look up at the sky which is bursting with vivid oranges and streaks of purple. And I notice the individual plants and the grass blades that seem to dance slightly in the breeze. How comes I've never enjoyed this tranquility in my back garden before? Perhaps one doesn't need to go to distant lands to travel. Perhaps one doesn't need to escape reality with VR. No, instead one needs to only step outside and travel their local area, even the garden, and make a decision to appreciate the surroundings. You never know, maybe like me, it will feel like you're somewhere else someone new. My mind then begins to unpick the perfect VR world that my mind created. Would digital designers be able to create this kind of atmosphere? I mean, the perfect imperfections that make our world. When I finish exploring the ancient Egyptian tomb, would I feel this, this, the sense of serene fulfillment as I do now? Undoubtedly, virtual reality will continue to advance so that it's capable of being mind-bending, mind-boggling, and mind-blowing, which will go on for many years to come with its harsh extremes and astonishing landscapes. However, for me, I think we will always know that it is not the real world. And because of that, there's no substitute for this world, our world. So rather than getting caught up in the debate whether we should travel or not, perhaps we should ask ourselves, can we appreciate where we are and make the most of that? So you can see that this is a fantastic ending because it ends on a a, really a call to action to our readers it's or to their readers asking them to think about and contemplate um you know what is going on in their life it's also using great rule of three it's been creative with their language and it also uses rich description we've got sensory imagery here which you might not associate with an article but you know i challenge you go and look at some articles particularly travel ones and see whether they use um, you know, sensory imagery, they've appealed to the visual, they've appealed to the auditory with the onomatopoeic coup. So again, it's really fitting for this style and it works really well. And they've used oxymorons, the perfect imperfections. And so you can see that it's a really thoughtful response. And they've used these techniques, not for the sake of it, but for a purpose to really impact the reader. So they have a clear sense of what they wanted to create. And that's why, as I've you know, said before, and I'm sure if you've watched some of these videos, it always comes back to the three fundamental questions. What is the genre? What is the theme or what is the issue you are exploring? What is the emotional impact on um, you want to have in your reader? What, what emotional journey do you want to, your reader to go on? And even in nonfiction tasks like this, how do you want them to feel and think at each stage? And how are you going to do that? So I'm sure you will agree from this, that this is a fantastic piece um, and the students has worked really hard and are really proud of the progress that they've made and how they've really taken on board, um, you know, the high-end techniques. And more importantly than that, they haven't just tried to, you know, um, take shortcuts. They've really taken on board um, the, those principles of their writing being powerful enough to convince others and they've experimented and they come up with something wonderful here. So let's wrap this up. The key takeaways, encourage your, to read, uh, encourage your team to read a little and often, discuss a variety of topics with them, so technology, traveling, homework, you know, things that are going on in society, and encourage them to practice writing speeches, articles, and letters. Only by doing that will they be able to bridge the gap between the, what they're reading and their writing. And of course, you know, make sure that you get some expert advice as well, whether that be a teacher or a tutor, um, you know, get them to read their work, to give them some specific pointers to help guide them with um, how to use the techniques um, in a masterful way. And equally, if you guys you know, are watching this and you haven't got in touch to get some help and you'd like to, if you would like your team to be able to write like this, then feel free to send me a message and we can see if we can help you. Otherwise, let us know in the comments what your takeaways were and what did you think of the students' work? I'm sure you are just as impressed as we are. And 
I look forward to some of your comments, questions, and as I said, get in touch if you would like some help um, putting what you've said and what you've seen into practice. Otherwise, have a fantastic evening. Enjoy the rest of the week. I'll see you soon. Bye, everyone.